Hello, my name is Ronald Hall of his Jones Technical Institute. And today I'm going to be performing and demonstrating an air system check of this 2012 International train start. And before I get started, I want to talk about the primary and secondary tank. This is the primary and secondary tank right here. You can be at various locations on different trips. This is what it is. What, what we need to do, we need to drain those each, each time we do our checks, each step that we do. And it's important to drain those daily as well. Before we get started on, on that, we need to be able to stop our wheels. Uh, the reason for that is because we have the parking brake released that we don't need the truck rolling off. Okay, so the first part of the check is that we're going to be going into the uh, cabin in the truck and we have drained the primary and secondary tank to start it to, to start it to recharge. The first when we turn the key over in the on position, there's gonna be a buzzer that goes off or a low low pressure indicator telling us that we have low pressure or no pressure uh, on the gauge. And we're gonna take a look at that. We're gonna go inside the truck and we're gonna let you give give you a point of view of what, what we're talking about. Okay, so now I'm inside the cab of the truck and I'm gonna turn the key in the on position. Yeah, let's get ready to start the truck up. And there's that indicator that we're talking about. So now that indicator is going to stay on until it gets up to a certain certain pressure. And what we would do, we will watch on the gauges here. We have a gauge for the primary and secondary tanks. You know, and as the engine is running, okay, the compressor which goes, the air is being compressed from the compressor to the air dryer to the tanks. And we're watching to see when does it go off. Okay, so according to the gauge, it's a little bit over 60 PSI with this specification. So now what we're doing now, we're going to have the, we're waiting for the uh, system to build up, the air dryer, and, and what it would do, it would, it would, what we call purge, and what it also called cycle, and that will let us know that our tanks are uh, filled to capacity. What I want to do is bring us over to the air dryer, show you what an air dryer is, and uh, listen in as it purges. Okay, what we're doing now is waiting for the air dryer to go ahead and purge. And that's how we'll know that our primary and secondary tanks are filled. So that's what we're waiting for. Right now we're looking at the air dryer. Okay, 
there you go. That was the purge. So now the primary and secondary tanks are filled, and now we're gonna move on to the next half of the of the test. Okay, so now that the uh, system is built up, so now we we have shipped the vehicle off, and now we're checking for a a drop in pressure, and we would do that for two minutes, listening in, checking for leaks, uh, uh, listening in for leaks, going around and doing the exterior uh, 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 exterior check, and we would do that do that each time. And because we're moving on to our next step, uh, but first this step is, is waiting for the uh, drop of pressure for two minutes, and we'll be back. Okay, now so I'm ready to uh, do the second part of our test. We did not have a drop in pressure with the first part. The the indicator worked as as, as normal as supposed to. So this is the second part of the uh, of the test, and what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to test the parking brake. Okay, and this is the, what we call the PP1 valve, and outside of the vehicle and doing a, doing a, a full external check of the, of the vehicle. Okay, so now I'm on the outside of the vehicle here, and I'm doing an external check here. Of basically, everybody that's, that's part of this air system. We're checking our trailer lines right here, make sure they're not set free. Over here, tape lines. This will be down here at the bottom here, but I'll try to make sure the very tank Going over to our chambers here, because this is, this is where we got the air limited to now. But once, once we apply that parking brake, this is what air in this chamber. We're making sure these chambers are properly mounted as well, and they're not leaking in the air. While we're here, checking for other maintenance issues that might arise in, in, or anywhere on here on the chassis. Also looking at the this particular truck here has, actually has a uh, disc here. And I'm checking it, checking it for anything that might be out of place or needs to be replaced. And like I said, a full, a full exterior of the truck. Making sure everything is where it belongs. Making sure our tires, got the tires are good, look at it. So we've passed that portion of the test and we'll be back with the next half. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so now I'm doing the second half of the, of the test and I'm here uh, as the giving you the POV of what I'll be doing. And we're, check, we're checking the service brake here on the International. Okay, I have my uh, assistant here. He's gonna go ahead and apply the service brake and we're gonna be going ahead and doing our check to make sure that we don't have any air leaks. So we started up here at the front, looking back here. This is a service brake. Will be uh, attached to the front wheels, and we're gonna do just like we did before with the with the uh, parking brake, doing the exterior, making sure that we do not have any air leaks on here. Okay, so going around here, checking it, checking there, make sure it's everything's properly mounted and secured. We're going over to the left side. Let's see. So everything's checked out, didn't hear any leaks, and we're going to move on to the next step will be the primary and secondary tanks. Okay, so I'm back uh, here with the third and final test here. And I'm back here with the primary and secondary tanks. And, and what I'm doing is I'm going to drain out one tank from the bleeding valve. The bleeding valve is right here. This is the prime. This is the primary. And what I'm going to be doing is we're making sure that we don't have a compensation uh, of air coming into the, the tank that we bleed because it was the one we valve. We don't want that. And, we, and the way we would check that visually, because we can't see air, is on the gauge. So now I'm going to drain the primary tank, and then we're going to take a look at the gauge.
Okay, so now I'm going to go into the cab and we're going to look at the gauge. Give you this POV here. As we can see, I, I, I went ahead and drained it from the... Okay, that was the drain from the tank here. And as you can see, the primary and the secondary uh, gauges are different. We had a different reading, and that means it is not compensating for that, which, which registers as a good valve. Okay, and also you hear that the, the pressure, low pressure indicator is also ringing as well. So that tells us that test as well is uh, is accurate. So we have a, a passed air system test here on this 2012 International Transstar. actually what the entire assembly is mounted up on. We're coming back from the S-CAM housing to what is known as the slack adjustment. So, okay, since 1994, they've been automatic slack adjusters. And we want to make sure they are, are in spec when, we've been in, when we are inspecting those, if this is on a particular truck. Also, what we want to make sure, too, is our lines that connect to the brake pedal airline are in good condition and also that that brake chamber is properly caged when we are inspecting those brakes on the vehicle. Okay, 
We also want to make sure that this vehicle, as you see on the side here, that we have it jacked up on stands, not on a jack, to properly do that. All right, and that was how to do the brake inspection. Uh, Hello, my name is Ronaldo Hall, I'm here at Jones Technical Institute, and today I am going to be performing a brake adjustment on this Kenmore here. Uh, basically what the brake adjustment is, uh, take a look here. This is the drum and the uh, shoe lining that, that meets together, that's what will stop the wheel. And <clears throat> what we don't want is those to be dragging when the vehicle is operating. If it is, those, those really need to be adjusted. Uh, it will cause what is known as glazing. Uh, and when you do your out of round measurement, uh, it will also be out of round as well, too. That's what will cause that. Uh, but what we're doing is the adjustment, and this is what we call the slack adjuster here. And right here, there is a bolt. I have a According to the specification for this particular truck, 7 sixteenths. And right now, it is it is free. So when we, when I go ahead and move this, we are going to get. So now that's not moving. That's not supposed to be like that. But this is what we do when we are doing the adjustment. And you can see it's not moving at all. So that, those two are binding together the drum and the uh, shoe. So come back, come off it. Did a half a turn on that, and we're gonna make sure that it is not dragging. And as I'm feeling on it, this is doing it more dragging. We got a significant correct gap there. And what we're doing with the slack adjustment, we want to make sure that we have a 90 degree angle. There's always a 90 degree angle here. Uh, we should have a travel of half an inch no more than half an inch when we when we come down on this on this adjustment okay so if we apply the brake uh, we will have a half an inch and we will use our have to grab the tape measure Measuring uh, the Go ahead. Try to break. Right, Thanks about it. Okay. okay. Release. So we had a half inch there. And we want to make sure that we keep all our components here on the sack of just degrees as well. <clears throat> and our chamber and, and lines in good, good condition as well too when we're doing the adjustment while we're underneath the wood. Okay? And uh, that was how to do the Work adjustment, I'm here with John Sutton Institute. Thank you for watching.